Thank you. Um, well, I was going to say I'm an architect, but I guess you know that already. Um, I was born in 1966, which is something you didn't mention, but I thought was pretty important um, in the context of this photograph. Um, this photograph was taken near where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in uh, western New York State. I was born in Chicago, but I spent uh, most of my formative years in western New York State. And this photograph was taken um, on April 18th in 1914 and uh, in kind of near, between kind of uh, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. And um, my, uh, I have two, gr two grandmothers that I knew very well. One was um, a half, what they call a half-blood American Indian from the Creek tribe. This happens to be the Iroquois, uh, uh, this happens to be part of the Iroquois nation, uh, which was kind of occupying um, large parts of New York State. Um, and my other grandmother, who I knew, was uh, an immigrant from, from Germany. And um, both of them were alive, um, and both of them were 10 years old when this photograph was taken, um, 1914. Um, and I think that, that because I knew both of them, um, I, sudden, I, I only found this photograph fairly recently, um, I have a, a kind of connection um, to this place because I, you know, I come from here, I grew up here, I know exactly what it's like. This is, um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's, uh, it's, though it's the middle of April, there's snow on the ground. And this is western New York, so it's kind of very close to, I guess, the American version of Siberia. Um, and, you know, there's a, a kind of a wood behind these people. Um, and you can see the way they're dressed. Uh, they have, um, you have old people, you have young people. They're dressed in, uh, in, uh, in, in furs and in um, uh, deer skin that they, uh, from the animals that they killed, and you can see some of their um, living, some of the structures that they lived in behind them, the teepees and, and, and so on. And of course, nothing could be more distant from my uh, experience, and I think you know, probably um, many people, uh, most people that I have encountered in my life's experience is pretty radically different from, um, from these people, and the connection that they had with, uh, with nature and with a specific place. To me, this photograph is very much about a people who are very deeply embedded in a place. Um, this is an image um, of Earth, obviously, that was taken from the moon uh, 44 years ago. So it was taken in 1966. It's one of the first images that we have um, seen from, uh, the, well, one of the first images, certainly, that we got from the moon of Earth. And it's one of the first times in this, this whole period of time in the, when you know, we started sending rockets up and uh, they took pictures and sent us back photographs of Earth, um, that we could see it, i.e. this place that we'd been living on, inhabiting um, for hundreds of thousands of years. And um, we, we, I suppose you know, this is a very interesting moment because um, simply because we had, we had, okay, we knew it was round intellectually, we understood quite a lot about its kind of the physics of Earth and so on, but we didn't have an image. You know, we didn't know exactly what it looked like. So it was very difficult to connect this uh, image with any sense of how we would think about beauty, for example, or how we would think about, well, anything else that we kind of visually consume. Um, and we can also, I suppose, for the first time, look back at Earth um, and imagine how it always, how it was kind of untouched by human artificiality. In other words, before we actually did anything, um, well, it looked probably exactly like this. Um, OK, we can't really check that, of course. But let's say that, for argument's sake, that, that, that's, that's something we can accept. Um, and this kind of completely, let's say, natural Earth, um, which is a new image, uh, something that we had never seen before, um, really 
grabbed people. You know, it really got people's attention. Um, and it, it's something so profound that obviously, uh, probably we still don't really fully understand how it's shifted our perception of ourselves. The other interesting thing about this photograph or this, this, the, 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 this image of Earth at that time, 44 years ago, is that the population of people living on it um, was half what it is today. So in the 44 years uh, since this image is taken, world population has doubled. So, and I, I was um, talking to my students recently the other day um, and reminding them, most of them were born in the 80s, so it wasn't really reminding them, but telling them for the first time about uh, Buckminster Fuller's description of Earth as a spaceship traveling around the sun at 66,000 miles an hour and spinning around its axis or at the equator, for example, at 1,000 miles an hour. And, you know, this is a kind of incredible uh, concept that really was, that he articulated, but I think was able to do so because, well, this is the first time that he, that, that we, that we um, Earthians, as he called us, um, uh, saw it. Um, <clears throat> but um, as we zoom in, this is a photograph um, over Greenland, and um, we can see uh, one of these uh, glaciers which is melting. And of course, uh, what has happened um, outside of this kind of untouched natural uh, sphere, this beautiful sphere on which we uh, live, uh, what has happened um, has been quite a radical transformation that I think we all you know, pretty much know, and I'm not going to talk about this too much, but know is, has come as a consequence of our actions. And this is a melting uh, glacier, and one of the more famous ones. Um, I happened to be in an airplane, and we flew over it. And normally, when you take the plane to the States, they don't fly quite that high, but I was going to Seattle, so they went all the way up you know, in this kind of big arc, and I, it was a beautiful uh, kind of cloud-free day, and I was really astonished to see this sight of all these melting, to see what you know, people and scientists and so on have been telling us for, uh, for so long. And if we go then, this is an image of, um, of Ireland. This is the Shannon, uh, and this is, uh, you know, um, back. Uh, I, had, I had one uh, very fortunate experience um, to take a helicopter trip across Ireland. And I brought my camera as you would, you know. And uh, unfortunately, it was kind of a, you know, a misty day. But it was actually quite, quite beautiful. And this image for me encaps encapsulates um, something about something about the other impact that man has had, um, because of course we know the island, the Irish island, as this uh, kind of incredibly built-up place. This place that has been uh, touched since uh, man has been living here and carved up and partitioned and. Uh, uh, let's say, divided into all of these little fields, but also uh, across this incredible ecosystem and you know, the harvesting of the bog. And you kind of see in this image uh, so much of our relationship um, between nature and man uh, as a kind of, a, let's say, a visual system. Recently, uh, in the very recent past, we have urbanized this place. Um, we have created things like this, and I have all these images. And I, mean, I, I think, when I put this up, I think, this is horrible, but I'm not 100% sure if everybody agrees with me because there are some positive things about this. This is, this is of course, you know, what happened a lot during the Celtic Tiger, which was you know, lots of housing and lots of houses and uh, following policies that were largely, well, all policies are created by man. We make these decisions, all of us together collectively. We you know, vote our governments in, we decide on democracy, and we end up with policies and things that end up, let's say, producing through the very tortured system of planning and so on, stuff like this. And what you end up with, for example, is uh, something that, you know, here's a gated um, estate with a gate there and a, you know, a tennis court back here. Um, and you know, everybody has a front garden and a back garden. Um, but you can also see in this image some of the older uh, housing estates, these that are right next to the road. And then when the planning, uh, the new planning act came out, you know, the setback of, of 15 meters or whatever it was. And so you see the houses that are kind of lining up with that. Then you see something of the village just sort of remaining down here. Um, and this kind of stuff happened everywhere. And you know, you can see this crossing the country, lots in, in this sort of thing. This is, um, I think, outside of Galway. But I mean, this is one of these images where you look at it and you say, if I was in, a, in, in the spaceship that was stopping off, you know, if I was coming to Earth the other direction, in other words, I, I, from another planet, and I stopped off at the moon, and I looked at this thing, and I thought, wow, that's amazing. And then the next place I got to was here. <laughs> I'd be like, what on Earth is this all about? And you would say something like, well, they obviously like building lots of white. 
things, whatever they are. Um, so, and then, you know, we have bits of motorway, we have uh, this kind of, let's say, what I call this sort of urbanized form um, that's happened, little bits of uh, substations that happen uh, along the kind of um, borings and next to the, the hedges and, and, and these developments that have happened in towns. You know, uh, here's a really beautiful little town in this kind of extraordinary, I don't know, flower-like form of, a, uh, of, a, of an estate that has happened um, on, its, on its backside. And of course, as you get close to the cities, it becomes stuff like this. Um, and stuff like this. Um, and so one wonders about our mindset. You know, what, what kind of people are we that inhabit these places? Uh, because after all, it's an island. Um, it's, it's um, you know, we're fundamentally conditioned by the fact that we have a coast around us. You know, you can't take a train to, to London. Uh, you can't get in, you know, you, you have to get in a, a boat or a plane or something like that. Um, and uh, we have, I think, um, as we have ceased um, looking after things like these guys here, um, we've become urban um, people. We've become an urban population um, on what is basically, obviously, a very beautiful and very fragile kind of rural place. Um, and I would say that we've been, we're inhabiting a form, and this is in Limerick, um, these, are, these are urban cows, <laughs> um, <laughs> that we don't fully understand. We're inhabiting a form. I mean, the physical stuff that we have built. And I mean, I think I was walking around here before uh, I came in to talk, and it's kind of fantastic to see how, um, how, how Tala has transformed itself in this little civic cultural quarter. Uh, but most of Ireland is still, um, you know, uh, some place where urbanism isn't quite so intense. It's more like this. Um, and this is an image that uh, came from the Atlas of uh, the, um, the Atlas of the Irish Landscape. Um, and I think it describes very pretty clearly some of the, the conflict uh, between our urban demands and expectations, rights of ownership, um, our health and safety concerns, um, have, and our uh, demand to have a hospital within 10 minutes drive, to have all of the facilities that we, as if we were city dwellers everywhere in the state, uh, could uh, in, enjoy, but still have our little plot of land um, where we would be able to live in a kind of bucolic, sort of isolated situation. So we bring our urban values, we bring our urban mindsets, we bring our urban demands in a way, and we have cha changed our hedges uh, into walls and taken this ecology of the landscape and transformed it into an in infrastructure which is really only about serving us, our needs. Um, so I saw, I see, um, it, we live in a time also which um, is, <laughs> this is, this is outside of Limerick, this is a, kind of in Limerick anyway, the famous uh, or infamous Parkway Roundabout. This is one of those, um, you know, NAMA projects. We own it. Isn't it great? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it was supposed to be, I think, I remember meeting the planners and he said, oh, this is the largest, um, the, the largest development, the l largest shopping center in Europe, you know, that type of thing. And a lot of that sort of talk about it. And of course, it's, it's sort of stopped. And we live in this time now of plans and planning. The future seems, you know, the, the future seemed under control. We have a complex web of professions and laws and statutes and governance that's supposed, that holds sway, you know, that's supposed to drive us towards something. Um, but in a way, what we haven't really considered yet is the result, is, is what we get at the end of all of this. So we thought that we would look, and I'm going to show you very quickly uh, a little, a, an attempt to see this all differently. Um, we, and some of this is maps, um, but these are maps with a difference. Um, we were looking at um, the fact that a lot of information is now available through GIS, and in fact, local authorities, in fact, the IT departments and local authorities control this information. Um, so the IT people have become the go-to people for you know, any kind of map and mapping information that you want. Of course, the OSI uh, is, is, is uh, in control of this at the level of the state. Um, but we thought we'd look at, when I came to Limerick, we found that there's, a, there's been a big debate going on about you know, the, the city and the county and how problematic, uh, how much they hate each other and so on. And the fact that they have, the, the county has built all these shopping centers around the outside uh, edge of the city. And of course, the city has lost all of its, uh, all of its uh, commerce and so on and so forth. So 
Of course, there's much more complicated than that, but we thought in any case, what we would do is look at this as if it were one place. In other words, to kind of pretend we were the, you know, the, the Martians that were arriving on Earth and saying, well, we know nothing about this system. We know nothing about these laws and these people. We just are arriving here. So we took a big drawing, and if you uh, know anything about Limerick, this is uh, the Shannon Estuary. Shannon Airport is there, Limerick City is here. Ardna Krusha, which is our famous power station from 1926, is there, um, and uh, Killaloo is up here, and so on, and Dublin is that way, um, and America is that way. So this, then, is that same drawing, and all those white dots are houses. Every single one of those dots is a house. So we took all the other information away, and we made houses. Uh, we made these white dots into houses. OK, in the villages, like you know, villages are these little kind of clusters, um, it's obviously more dense. But you can see that the houses are everywhere. It's like butter over toast. And so we thought, huh, this is interesting. Um, and this is not Limerick. This is Limerick and Clare and Limerick County and North Tipperary. There are a whole bunch of little counties in here. Um, we looked at those houses. They're mostly yellow. I don't know why. <laughs> and then we looked at the roads that are connecting them. And these roads are uh, here for th thousands of years. These roads, are, these roads are probably some of the first things that were built here, the way through the land. When you look at this network, this is the network of roads without the uh, hierarchy you know, of the road network, of the system um, kind of showing through. When you look at this network of roads, you understand something about, well, why are the houses there? Well, they're there because there's this kind of incredible capillary system you know, that's like, this is like looking at the capillaries in the brain or the heart or something that's delivering uh, juice pretty much everywhere. And so the physical place that we have constructed and that we've been actually living on for thousands of years um, is, is uh, completely in tune with how we've been develop developing it. We looked at other stuff, and I'm going to kind of skip over all these things, like where schools are, um, where playing fields are, where contaminated groundwater is, for example, all this red. Um, we looked at the attitudes of people, what they thought about you know, living in, out in uh, various uh, different places, and the times that it took them to get into the city center. We found a lot of people didn't actually go to the city center. They kind of went through the city. Um, and then we tried to look at this, the city itself as a, as a form. And this is, um, that's a bit washed out, but this is a topography drawing of the city. This is the topography and everything that man has done. So this is before man, if you like, and this is after man. Uh, this is all of the buildings and roads and so on. Um, and then we looked at layers of stuff, housing, um, uh, green space was very, very important. Um, nature was very, very important. Playing pitches were very important. So, I mean, uh, these are all kind of designations within um, development plans. This is all the farmland. Um, so we found that the nature, that nature and the nature of the city and uh, of the region is a binding element. So this is the Martians' version of, um, of, of what the region, uh, of, what, of what the glue of the region is, if you like. So we looked at all of the little, of all the ducks that are kind of living in every pond and, you know, uh, the different habitats that are there. We looked at neighborhoods and the way that neighborhoods are connecting the city and the county. Um, we looked at, um, for example, I suppose we, we, jumping ahead, we proposed new policies because we thought, well, the, we looked carefully, quickly at some of the policies like housing, um, and this is the only one that I'll talk about, but housing uh, is a big local authority policy, but it is about the house. And it's about this kind of thing, the house which is everywhere. It's not about fundamentally uh, neighborhoods and communities that kind of bring um, housing and houses together. And they're complicated things. Horses, you know, much unloved horses next to much loved stadia um, uh, that are, and neighborhoods are also things like this, places that we, you know, shopping centers at the edge of town. Um, so part of what we tried to do with this, uh, with this study is to present um, some kind of a view that wasn't based on this sort of short-term thing that left us with things like this um, and leave us with um, things that we can uh, hold on to that are based on the long term, um, that are based on, let's say, the perseverance and durability of, for example, nature. And I hope, in the end, um, and I'll just kind of flip to the last image, which um, was pretty much the first image, um, I hope in the end that when I finish, let's say, my time thinking about um, what happens in Ireland, that my kids will be able to look back at an image like this and ask these same kind of questions. Thanks.